What's going on, y'all? So basically, uh, we back on the show. Uh, I had to take a few days off due to um, more than a few days, quite a few days off due to the the weather issues I've been dealing with down here, man. Uh, you know, you try to go for warmer weathers and you end up uh, paying the price for that warm weather in the form of hurricanes. First, it was Helene and then most recently was um, Milton. And uh, even though Helene kind of did a little bit of uh, like a little bit of damage, not too much uh, to where I was at. Milton, on the other hand, went right over me. And uh, and shout out to all the people that checked on me, uh, you know, that that actually reached out to make sure I was good and uh, make sure everything was was copacetic this way, man. I appreciate y'all. I'm not going to forget it. So um, just want to make sure I got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and get into it. Look at that line of people trying to get out of the city. Trying to get out of town, get away from this Category 5 hurricane. Look at that, far as you can see. Far as you can see. Hold on, let me zoom in. Far as you can see, people trying to get out. And I'm going right to the danger. Alright, let's do it. You know, what Hurricane Milton uh, really taught people or what the lesson that, that I should say, what Hurricane Milton, the lesson that people should have that should have uh, pulled out of this whole situation of aftermath of Hurricane Milton is that, you know, the rules of three, they still apply, man. You know, there's the rules of three is, you know, you got three minutes without air. You can do three days. I'm sorry, three hours without shelter. Three days without water, uh, three weeks without food, and seventy-two hours, which is three days uh, until anarchy. Now, these are all obviously extreme situations. You know, uh, you can definitely live three hours without being in shelter. But if you were in an extreme and hostile environment, uh, you're going to need to get to some shelter to make sure that you are protected from the elements and yeah, 72 hours to anarchy, three days to anarchy is uh, an extreme situation. Whereas if there was no electricity, no running water, uh, none of the stores were open, no gasoline um, and people got desperate. You know, we've seen a lot of those situations where people got desperate, especially uh, along the, along the uh, destruction path of Hurricane Milton from Fort Myer up to uh, Sarasota, uh, 
up to Bradenton in Tampa, where sheriff deputies and city police had to man the gas stations. You know, they had to drive through communities and, um, you know, just kind of check on the people because uh, they were issuing warnings about about break ins and how they were going to treat those who decided to take the opportunity to loot people who were victims of a natural disaster, how they were going to treat them uh, in the court of law, like prosecute them to the extent of law. They, they weren't going to tolerate it at all. Uh, there were neighborhood, there were people in the neighbor, in the communities that were talking about um, uh, how they would treat looters if they uh, if they ran into them in their own properties. Uh, you can use your imagination on that. And then uh, and then you had um, situations where uh, outside of the looting, but the um just the just the the people that would get desperate you know like the gas stations um trying to keep their generators running uh so they can keep their food fresh and cool or be able to run like electric stoves and stuff like that so they can make meals at home for their families um i've always tried to advocate that we should be prepared not if a situation is to happen, but when a situation is to happen and being prepared isn't it isn't like some tinfoil hat conspiracy concept where, you know, um, you're living in some kind of fear bubble. It's really not a matter of if it's a matter of when and it doesn't necessarily have to be a hurricane. You know, I'm originally from Ohio and there were uh, a few different years of my growing up that I remember uh, like extreme blizzards that shut the whole city down. And, you know, I'm originally, like I said, from Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, Franklin County, Franklin County is home to about 2 million people. And there's a lot of moving parts in those places where, you know, a blizzard, an ice storm shuts the whole city down for days. You know what I'm saying? And if you if you're not properly equipped to to get through those circumstances, you know, and you know, and you're gonna be you, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna become a desperate human being. And when people are desperate, you're not the only person that'll be desperate. So you don't even want to confront them type of problems out there in the world, you know, take it out of Ohio, go to the West Coast where they have earthquakes, you know, in the uh, even though in, even in Ohio, but further into the Midwest, they got hurricanes and hurricanes are um, unlike torn, unlike, I'm sorry, not hurricanes, they have tornadoes and tornadoes, unlike hurricanes, the wind is more powerful and it's concentrated. It's more powerful. It's concentrated and they come out of nowhere. Like it could just be a cloudy day and all of a sudden here comes a, a EF five, just rip through the whole city, the whole county, you know, like where does that, and then they go away just as fast as they come, they go away. And you can have several of them touch down at, at, at several different places at a time. You know, you got, um, man, all, all, you know, you got all kinds of different natural disasters and aside from the natural disasters, we have, uh, the possibility of of man-made emergencies, i.e., acts of um, the T word, acts of the T word, and uh, I don't want to, I don't want to say the wrong thing on YouTube, but you know, these are all these are all realities, man. People need to have a certain amount of um, people need to have a certain amount of items you know you got to have about one gallon of water per person per day that's what we consume naturally about one gallon of water per person per day and it's and it's best to have a three-day supply if you plan on evacuating somewhere and if you plan on staying in the home have about a two-week supply of water you know um you want to have some non-perishable foods man something that you can 
keep in a dry storage without worrying about it going bad, like, you know, like beans or rice, you know, something of that nature, canned goods uh, that, that have a long shelf life. You know, you want to have a good flashlight in case the electricity goes out, um, you know, to be able to see in the dark. Uh, another important thing is medical. You know, you want to make sure you have everyone's medical needs that are within your household, whether it just be you or you're taking care of a whole family. You want to have an adequate supply of medical um, items, whether they be over the counter or prescribed. And some people's prescription medicine requires, you know, like refrigeration and things like that. You want to make sure that you have uh, fail safes in place to be able to take care of that. Uh, another thing that you want to think about is uh, self defense. Self defense, a lot of people think of self defense as in just getting a gun, but there's more to it than having a firearm. You have to have some kind of training because shooting a firearm, and I've said this before. Shooting a firearm at a static target in a shooting range is a whole lot different than shooting that firearm at a target that's intending to hurt you or a target that's probably firing back at you. You know, you have a lot of uh, you got to learn your body's physiology. How do you react under stress? And you don't have to actually get into a gunfight or to be attacked to have a pretty good idea of how you would act. Uh, or how your body would react to stress. Um, you'll never know what you're going to really do unless you're put into that real situation, but you can have a better idea of how to cope with the body's natural reaction to stress. Um, if you're, if it's, if it's at all possible, you can go to an outdoor range where you could, you know, get the heart rate going a little bit and then try to fire down range. Uh, the, the better. A lot of indoor ranges, won't allow you to, you know, start doing jumping jacks in your stall or do some push-ups in the stall and then get, go, go to shooting, uh, obviously for safety reasons. But you want to try maybe a public range, outdoor range, um, and, you know, see if that you can make those type of arrangements. It's, it's imperative that you know how to defend yourself because if you are not, if you are incapable of defending yourself, all you are doing is you are setting up an opportunity for someone to take something from you. I don't want that to happen. You definitely don't want that to happen. And let the lessons of Hurricane Milton and its destructive power bring that realization of being prepared to the forefront to everybody. Um, like I said, man, I'm gonna continue to try to bring, uh, I'm gonna continue to try to bring um, survival needs and survival points to light and to try to bring it to everybody as often as I can uh, here on the show. But I want you all to train hard, train often, train properly and train safely. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, comment to this video. Train hard, train often, train properly and train safely. All right. Peace.